Stadiums are constantly being built and modified throughout the entire world, and usually each one is an improvement upon previous ones. However, there have been some stadiums, be it due to poor design, timing, or planning, that would become quite unideal for the public and teams that would occupy them. These are stadiums and arenas that would become obsolete quickly. First, we have Historic Crew Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. This stadium opened in 1999. It was unique and innovative for the time as it was the first stadium built for soccer at this scale in the United States. The problem was it was built fairly cheaply and would be quickly outdone by subsequent stadiums that were built for the league. This was built at a time where MLS really just was not what it is today and the resources were not being put into it like they are today. The stadium was fairly basic, mostly bench seating and no overhangs that are pretty much in every MLS stadium today. This would not go unnoticed by ownership though as they would demand a new stadium from Columbus in 2017. And when it didn't seem like it was going to happen, he intended to move the team to Austin, Texas. Less than 20 years old, this stadium was seen as obsolete by ownership. And ultimately, a deal was reached where he would get an expansion team in Austin, Texas. New ownership would come to the crew, but a new stadium still would be built as part of the deal. That stadium would open in 2021 as Lower.com Field and would vastly outshine the previous Cruz Stadium. This basically shows what happens when an evolving league becomes a little bit too popular for what you have in place. Next we have Atlanta, Georgia's Omni Coliseum. This arena opened in 1972 as the home of the Atlanta Hawks in the NBA and briefly the home of the Atlanta Flames of the NHL. This arena would have quite a few issues just based on the material that it was made out of. Like Aloha Stadium in Hawaii, weathering steel was used heavily in the structure of the venue. And similar to Aloha, the Omni's weathering steel would not react well to the climate of the area. Issues with rusting would occur and leaks in the roof would be a common occurrence at the arena. It was also built in a time when luxury boxes and club seating were not valued the same. Having only 16,000 seats for a major market such as Atlanta, the lack there of luxury seating and club seating, issues with the arena's weathering steel, and the constant construction of newer, better arenas would result in the Omni being demolished after only a 25-year run. While its replacement, the Phillips Arena, now known today as the State Farm Arena, would open two years later. Next, we have the Dome at America's Center, better known as the Edward Jones Dome. This opened in 1995 for the St. Louis Rams. Basically, this stadium was built when indoor NFL stadiums really weren't that great. You pretty much only built them in cities that really needed a dome stadium. And frankly, St. Louis actually really didn't need one. This stadium was okay by 1990 standards, but quickly as the 2000s went on and many new stadiums got built, especially nice new indoor stadiums, it would start to clearly show as one of the lackluster venues of the NFL with no natural light and just a very generic basketball arena-like look to it. This lackluster and obsolete atmosphere for an NFL stadium would ultimately be a major factor in the team leaving after the 2015 season. Ultimately, it was built at the tail end of an era where domes were not impressive venues. And frankly, that's why in truth, many stadiums built in the late 90s and early 2000s were built outdoors because domes just were not that great. They were like the Edward Jones Dome. So given the time that it was built and the fact that it never even got a Super Bowl, in hindsight, an outdoor stadium probably would have been better given that period. And here we go on to the Memphis Pyramid of Memphis, Tennessee. This opened in 1991 at a cost of around $70 million. With this, it was built as more of a kind of a bizarre attraction combined with a basic college arena. Its main tenant was a college team, so the expectations were a little bit different as far as arena experience. But it would be quickly replaced as in 2004, a replacement was built in the FedEx Forum, presumably as part of a deal to get the Grizzlies to move from Vancouver. They would play at the Pyramid temporarily from 01 to 03, but once the Forum was complete, not only did the Grizzlies move to the Forum, but also the Tigers. 
who had been the arena's main tenant for all of its history. A very bizarre design for an arena, poor acoustics, and a higher than average capacity for NBA probably never gave this arena a chance to become a long-term arena for the city. In 2015, after an intense renovation, it would reopen as Bass Pro Memphis in one of probably the greatest repurposing projects of a sports venue ever. And lastly, we have a stadium that was just built and designed at the wrong time. Guaranteed Rate Field, which when it opened in 1991 as New Comiskey Park, was built and opened with a lot of features that were just not very good. A steep and large upper deck that was just a big concrete behemoth, a very basic appearance and limited views of the outside. It would be very quickly outdone when newer ballparks such as Oriole Park at Camden Yards and Jacobs Field would open shortly after. And due in large part to this, along with negative reaction to the stadium, heavy renovations would be done very shortly into the stadium's life, relatively speaking. From 2000 to 2006, several projects were taken on on this stadium, the most significant one being the chopping of several rows of seating from the upper deck in 2003, just 12 years into the stadium's life. Today it really is just one of the worst ballparks in Major League Baseball. It was a rushed design process. The team nearly moved to Florida in 1988 and construction began on this stadium just a year later, so the planning process was very short. It probably should have been built closer to downtown as well, and that is what is trying to be attempted today as they already want a new stadium to replace this one just because there's only so much you can do to improve a stadium like this. So those are five stadiums that were obsolete quickly. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think and thank you for watching.